For the last ten years, all I'd done was kill. I killed for my family. I killed anybody that got in my way. Family and who you're born with is who you die for. This has to be the right way. Before we continue, let's stop a moment and take a look at some of the key features of this demo. Much of what you see was built with Quixel Megascan assets, but instead of using the game versions, we use the cinematic versions, which would typically only be used in film. There are around a million triangles each. And thanks to virtual texturing, they all use 8K textures as well. Nanite can render an insane number of triangles very quickly. There are over a billion triangles of source geometry in each frame that Nanite crunches down losslessly to around 20 million drawn triangles. What does that many triangles look like? This isn't noise. These are the triangles, each a different color. Most are so small that they look like noise. Nanite achieves detail down to the pixel, which means triangles are often the size of pixels. This amount of geometric detail requires shadows to be pixel accurate as well, and Nanite can do that too. Speaking of lighting, all of the lighting in this demo is completely dynamic, with the power of Lumen that even includes multi-bounce global illumination. No light maps, no baking here. Without GI, all of that beautiful lighting is gone. With Lumen enabled, we can move the light and the bounce changes instantly. Okay, let's keep going. We've made some great additions to our audio system as well. Convolution Reverb allows us to measure reverberation characteristics of real spaces, like actual caves that we sampled, and reproduce them in virtual spaces. Sound field rendering allows us to record and playback spatialized audio. All of this adds up to a more immersive experience. This swarm of bats was created with our Niagara effects system. Particles in Niagara can now talk to one another and understand their environment like never before. We've also added a ton of new functionality to run fluid simulations like you see in the water below. The demo runs on our Chaos Physics system. Here we are using it to accurately simulate the rigid bodies of the falling rocks and the cloth of her scarf. Now that the environment is so complex, we've needed to greatly improve our animation systems to adapt. We've added predictive foot placement and motion warping, which dynamically modifies IK and body position to look more natural. For the character to more realistically interact with the environment, we've added the ability to trigger seamless contextual animation events, like her hand on the door. That's promising. Dynamic GI is amazing, not just for speeding up iteration, but also for its impact on gameplay. Nice. Any light source can move while it still having be. beautiful bounce lighting. Dynamic illumination means specular as well, which you can see on all the metal surfaces. You can even see the Niagara-powered bugs reacting to the light. Lumen not only reacts to moving light sources, but also changes in geometry.
Remember we mentioned high poly assets? This statue was imported directly from ZBrush and is more than 33 million triangles. No baking of normal maps, no authored LODs. And we can do more than a single statue. There are nearly 500 of that exact statue at the same detail level placed in this room for a total of over 16 billion triangles from statues alone. Over this entire demo, there are hundreds of billions of triangles. With Mana, you have limitless geometry, and with Lumen, you have fully dynamic lighting and global illumination, all running on a PlayStation 5. doesn't need to be constrained to small rooms. It can stretch all the way to the horizon. The portal, it's open. Don't fail me now. What's next? Raiden's brother. We are partners in Earthrealm's defense. Are you also partners in incompetence? Fight!
We have waited a thousand years for this moment. From the depths of the darkest shadows, we will rise again with our fallen legions. To avenge our wretched purgatory. Build our empire on the souls of the meek. And you will know the dark heart of Skyrim. For The Last of Us Part Two, we're hoping to create a story that makes a commentary about the cycle of violence and how acts can beget other acts and show all the different aspects that can come out of it. Not necessarily good or bad, just the different consequences of one's actions. I'm gonna find, and I'm gonna kill every last one of them. I've heard a lot of people say, uh, why make a sequel to The Last of Us? I didn't even hear, hear the full pitch of the game, but just like the outline of what Neil was wanting to do with this game, I realized, oh, this is something we have to make. This, you know, this isn't even an option. There's absolutely more to do here. There's always the fear that, you know, when you made something great and you're gonna go back to it, you're gonna mess it up. You're gonna mess what made it so special. The test for us was like, can we come up with a story that can, one, stand on its own and be meaningful and have it weight, the same kind of feeling we had when we uh, came upon the story for the first one. But also now, because it's part two, it has to be additive. It has to take the first one to consideration that if you played both, then you get like a bigger narrative. The thing that Neil really cared about, that the studio really cared about, is honoring Ellie and, and Joel specifically and their journey as characters. What is the honest next steps that they would take? What are the truest moves that we could see them do? The Last of Us 2 expands on the first game, both in the relationship between Ellie and Joel, the relationships that we see Ellie having, and just the greater world that we're in, and we see more of it. It's a genre story about this infection that turns people into these crazy monster-like humanoids. The core of it is about these really intimate, intense relationships. At the start of the game, Ellie is 19. She is living in a safe, secure community. We're coming in, you know, 25 years after the outbreak. And you, as Ellie, live in Jackson, which is this kind of somewhat tranquil town in this really messed up reality. She has real community now. She has people who love and care for her, willing to sacrifice for her. Joel is also very settled down. He's now part of a town. He's no longer a smuggler. Actually, the town relies on this guy that is a very capable killer, and that's something these towns in this world need. Jackson and Ellie are shaken by a violent event. It really changes Ellie's day-to-day -day life, and now just living is no longer enough. Like, there's these people that have wronged her, and she wants retribution. And you as a player are gonna want retribution for what these people have done. And then you go off on this journey that leads you to Seattle, where now you're like stuck in the city that has these warring factions, and they're both fighting over the spoils of Seattle, and you're stuck there in the middle looking for this very specific group that has wronged you. And that's the concept of the story. And then it takes you on all sorts of twists and turns in Naughty Dog fashion. I know even within the studio, we've had a lot of like philosophical arguments about some of the events and what happens in the game. And I think in this one might be more divisive than the first game in a very kind of exciting way that I think it raises those interesting philosophical questions and asks the players to interpret some of the material that's there and see where they stand on those questions.
Your brother was lost thanks to the deceit and treachery of your enemies. Now, the weight of your bloodline lies on your shoulders. Be thankful to your enemies, for they teach you the ways to power. You must learn the ways of commerce and combat, but never fight with swords when a dagger will do. Keep your enemies close. The first step in avoiding the trap is knowing it is there. Real strategy requires cunning. Remember that, and your dynasty will rule this land through the ages. Days became hours, and hours became minutes. And now, can you feel that everything is changing? The things you could only imagine are becoming reality. Every little detail enlightened by the rising sun. Get back to doing what you truly love. And prepare to ride beyond your wildest dreams. Right for it's for real. They were building. It's a giant drill. These creepers aren't normal. They look like bats. Like a one-man panther division.
can't let the cult get what they want. Whatever they're searching for is down there. We have to activate that drill. Well, I guess this party is going to last a bit longer than I had hoped. The quest for the broken ghost has begun. I need your help adding a rare and valuable treasure to my collection. Just be careful. And don't die. Here we go again. to the woozle, sending out a decoy. You got blamboozled. It's like bamboozled, but with a blam. Pursue your fortune with the Season 5 Battle Pass. Featuring an adventurous new set of legendary items. You came looking for trouble, but trouble found you fast. Immediately unlock the legendary retrofitted hemlock at purchase, along with three new legend skins. Conquer the remaining 100 levels to earn the rest of the rewards, including legendary items like Fool's Gold Mirage, Sky Marshal Bangalore, and the reactive precision caliber wingman. You gotta take the good with the bad. I'm good and you're bad. As always, Season 5 continues to let legends personalize their experience with new music packs, loading screens and banners, themed banter for the quip wheel. You might still live on. I've seen ghosts around here. A new series of luxurious gun charms. And of course, a new batch of death-defying skydive emotes. Losing isn't fun. That's why I don't do it. Unlock your battle pass right now, or upgrade to the bundle to immediately unlock those first 25 levels and venture into battle with Fool's Go. Learn the steps before you try to dangle with me. Fortune favors the bold, and your next adventure awaits. Only with the Season 5 Battle Pass. <laughs> Someone call. Hi everyone, and welcome to our first video introducing the features of Hunting Simulator 2. For the first time in a long while in a hunting game, you can take a dog with you to help track down prey. Purchase a dog directly from the store you can access from your lodge. 
Give your new dog a name and train them to be your faithful companion for your hunts. You can choose from three dog breeds in the game, each with its own specific hunting attributes. Choose between a Beagle, Labrador Retriever, and German Short-Haired Pointer. Each breed specializes in hunting certain types of prey. Beagles belong to the hound family and can track and flush out prey, which help you approach and shoot them. Labrador Retrievers will retrieve shot birds from water and are therefore especially suited to hunting waterfowl, like teal and barnacle geese. German short-haired pointers are a pointing breed and therefore ideal when hunting smaller prey that are difficult to spot. In Hunting Simulator 2, your prey's tracks blend into the environment just like in real life. That's why it's essential to bring your dog on your hunting trips. Give them the command to find a track and they will get to work around you. There are multiple commands you can give your dog. As well as tracking, you can also ask them to wait. Come back quickly to you, flush out prey or retrieve a trophy, depending on the breed. When you command them to follow a track, keep a close eye on their reactions. If they stop with their head raised or bark at you, they may have found what you're looking for. Once your dog is on the trail of game, stroke them to reward them. The more your companion finds tracks and is rewarded by you, the better their tracking skills will become. This means you will find it easier to find new prey. You then just need to aim and take the perfect shot. If you shoot an animal but it runs off, Command your dog to follow the blood tracks to find the trophy or to approach and shoot again. Thanks for watching. Follow us on social media for more information on